Hi, I'm Nicole Scott with BNETTV.com. I'm down here at CTIA Wireless in Las Vegas. I'm joined by Tim Lorello from TCS Telecommunication Systems. Yes. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Nicole? Not bad, yeah, not, not bad. Yeah, not bad. It's a pretty, pretty cool show. <laughs> exactly. Great place to have it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and a little, I'm, I'm going to be doing a little bit better once I find out what you guys do. Well, very good. Well, and we're a data communications company that's been in business for 20 years. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. And when you think about wireless, uh, we've been very big in innovation on the data communications front for wireless. The very first uh, data introduction to wireless was text messaging. A lot of people don't realize that. I mean, many times uh, it wasn't only until about a couple years into the measuring data statistics that the wireless carriers decided to switch the SMS revenues into the data column instead of the voice column because it was generating a whole lot of revenue for them. Mm -hmm. And this past year, we've seen uh, messaging continue to grow. It's uh, grown over 100% this year. Uh, we expect it to grow another 100% next year. So it's been a great business for us, and uh, we've sent you know over 80 billion messages last year using our te uh, telecommunications systems infrastructure infrastructure that we sell to wireless operators. Um, the other data communications method that we we're seeing more and more in the industry today is with location technologies. And uh, of course, most of us are aware that when we dial 911, location information is presented to public safety. So your phones are located using either triangulation technologies or GPS. Our company focuses on taking that information and delivering it to public safety. We're the, we were the per, uh, company that pioneered how to do that um, approach for wireless. And today we handle about half of all the wireless E911 calls here in the United States, making sure that that data gets delivered to public safety. But after that, the, the new commercial uses of, of location technology are only now beginning to come to market. We're seeing exciting navigation applications. Um, uh, you know, those, those have been the pioneering applications. But we're really excited about where the messaging and location cross. Mm -hmm. So the idea of mobile local search. So you send a text message saying, you know, where's the nearest Starbucks? Well, today you have to enter a zip code. Do you happen to know the zip code of this convention center? I have no idea. I don't either. <laughs> <coughs> so finding the nearest Starbucks here is not exactly going to be easy for me to do. But if instead I just sent Starbucks without a zip code, and that could be interpreted as an opt-in for, oh, well, you obviously want to know where the nearest Starbucks is. You haven't given me your location. So I'm assuming, therefore, that you're asking for us to use your location. Find out where the phone's located using whatever technology is available, which, of course, is one mm -hmm. of the things we do. And then we deliver localized content as a result of that. So we think it's going to be a pretty exciting mm -hmm. future for mobile commerce, mobile advertising, and ultimately uh, location technologies are going to really be very innovative solutions. Now, I know that all handsets don't have such GPS or location-based uh, capabilities. With triangulation, will you be, um, what's the additional cost to the, the carrier or the network to, to do that? Well, the nice part is that for the most part, all phones are locatable at some way, here in the mm -hmm. United States at least. Because of the foresight that the FCC had with working with the wireless industry and public safety to provide a way to be able to locate phones for emergency uses, mm -hmm. uh, it means that pretty much every phone in the United States today for wireless is able to be located. The trick is, is can you locate it the way they want it to be located? So, for example, in the, exa uh, in the mobile local search example I gave, that requires a specific kind of location approach in the handset, and is it, a, is it supported or not? All of the handsets coming out today pretty much will mm -hmm. support that kind of capability. Not all the legacy handsets will, but, but many of them mm -hmm. will as well. So for the most part, I think it, it's not so much an issue of, of is the technology available. I think what's more important and what is, is being considered is, is the precision of the location mm -hmm. good enough. And so the precise location associated with triangulation in the GSM carriers isn't as strong. And what we're excited about is the fact that now, when you see the um, announcements from the handset vendors, they are now announcing that they're putting in GPS chips mm -hmm. into the handsets. And we were one of the pioneers who helped provide an open location protocol called Secure User Plane for Location, or SUPL. It's easier to remember it that way. Mm -hmm. And that protocol allows a handset to be, have its location information delivered to an external application. And what that means is now you know, tra fleet tracking and, and mobile workforce management and, and being able to do a buddy finder or a child finder application from the web, all of those are now possible using that type of protocol for GSM carriers. And so we're very excited about the, the precise location capabilities coming down the road. And that will address some of the concerns or questions you had about that as well. Fantastic. Now, um, I do know you guys have a little bit to do with WiMAX and location yes. base. Could you comment on that? And perhaps that maybe we'll start off with a definition of WiMAX. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Well, WiMAX, 
actually has a, a, a specific definition that most everybody forgets, including myself today. So from what I what I have always used as my uh, explanation of WiMAX is think of it as a cellular replacement, but using open IP protocols. So effectively, you have a a, a tower that's much like a, a, a Wi-Fi setting, which is you, you're, we're all used to Wi-Fi in our home. WiMAX is like that, but but a cellular tower equivalent to it. It provides IP-based connectivity to the device. And so now it's, and, and it usually operates on, on open spectrums. So what that means is it's an unlicensed spectrum. Pretty much anyone can use that technology as long as they establish a, um, the right power gain and, and you know, measure the, the capabilities. Uh, many of the carriers are looking at running it in the licensed spectrums so that they can um, you know, make sure that they have uh, control of, of, uh, of interference and, and things of that nature. So from our perspective, um, it's a new technology that's all IP based, so uh, everything's data. Um, and f what that means though is uh, it's a new technology, is it going to be able to support some of the things that we're used to in the cellular world like location? So what we've done today at the show is we've demonstrated, and we think we're the first who's ever shown this, the ability to actually locate a WiMAX enabled laptop uh, running on an actual carrier in the Pacific North Northwest that allows us to pretty much with a very high precision locate that partic uh, particular person's laptop. And sh uh, we actually have a person driving around. Uh, you can see exactly what road they're on, what side of the highway they're on. It's really amazing to see the precision that you can get out of the GPS technologies when used properly and, and of course, with the right technologies, which is what we're trying to provide for the industry. Are you planning on monetizing this location-based WiMAX? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, our, our goal is to, to sell this to carriers who can then use it to, to offer services. I mean, if you look at many of the studies, most of the consumer studies, when they ask, what are the 10 top applications you're going to be interested in, four or five of those are location-based. Uh, traffic around me, points of interest, navigation, local weather. Uh, these are, are information. I mean, if you think about, I've, I've always liked to say that location is um, one of those things that's uniquely wireless. I mean, if you think about a wireless customer, you're untethered. So the important thing of being able to offer that person service is where are they located? Are they in my footprint? You know, are they close to a tower? You know, how, much, how good of service can I give them is very dependent upon their location. So the carriers have always been aware of your location as a wireless customer. Now, let's just use that. I mean, your, your, your location is important. Am I close to that Starbucks I want to go to? Um, is there a, a sale on, on a, a, a particular book or video or, or uh, you know, right now we're offering a free Wii at our booth at 1341. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a hot product that was very hard to find. Mm -hmm. Around Thanksgiving time, I would have liked to know where is the stores that are local that happen to have a Wii. Mm -hmm. What's, where's the cheapest gas station? I'm a Shell, uh, you know, I prefer to use Shell. Where's the cheapest uh, Shell uh, pricing uh, for gas? These are all things that we always ask day in and day mm -hmm. out. And when we're wireless, we're untethered from, the, from the, our information sources mm -hmm. typically. So our feeling is that location coupled with you know, text messaging and other types of methods to get the information to the user are going to be very, very important technologies moving forward, and we plan to be pioneers in those areas. Well, fantastic. I'm very excited to see what types of uh, applications you're able to enable in the yes. future. Well, absolutely. <laughs> we'll continue to work on it. We're adding SMS, ban we're adding uh, location-enabled banners to text messaging so that now you can get something that's more relevant to what you do day in and day out uh, when you get it, and, and those will be free. Of course, more and more um, carriers want to offer free services to their mm -hmm. customers so that they can get into the um, ad-based uh, value proposition, and that's going to be very, very powerful. Powerful for carriers, we think going forward, because uh, I still want to find the nearest retail mm -hmm. store nearby. And if what's the you know, I'm, I'm peop, the retail stores spend millions, billions of dollars on trying to just get your eyeballs on a billboard. Mm -hmm. How much more important is it going to be if I'm looking for a, co a, a cup of coffee mm -hmm. to get me that information right in front of my, uh, my on my handset, that that fourth screen? We believe that's going to be very, very important, and will be a very good source source of revenue for carriers going forward. Well, fantastic. Tim, thanks so much for taking the time to talk no, about you. telecommunication systems. Thank you very much. <laughs> this Nicole. has been Tim from TCS, and I'm Nicole Scott, down here at CTIA Wireless for BNETTV.com.